Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Super Deluxe Carlat Cast. It is August 17th, uh, Thursday as usual, and um, guys... Lindsay, you had getting... to think about it for a minute. You were like, it is, what it is Thursday, today? if Thursday. you can believe it. Shut up, you fucking losers. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get hammered tonight. I'm just warning you guys. I'm drinking I... a very alcoholic beer. I'm drinking a Kentucky bur uh, bur breakfast stout, um, and uh, it's delicious, and boy, oh boy. Is it powerful? Almost as powerful as my feelings for Carlac. Uh, how's everybody doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. Good. Yeah, it's been a, it's been, right. a, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a day, but like, this is always gets to be a highlight of my Thursday. So, Brit, yes. Brit, Brit had to think about it for a minute. She's like, today I'm sucked like work wise, but I mean, other than that, it's fine. I've also just been really tired lately, like. And I don't know why. Like, I had a migraine last night, and I slept from, like, 7.30 to 6.30 this morning, and I was still tired. I still had to take a nap, like, midday, because I was you just exhausted. You still had time to send me a message on Steam, like, John, I see you boning Carlac. That like, wasn't last night. That was the night before. Oh, was that the night before? Okay, sorry. When you're with Carlac, time means nothing. It just kind of stops. I get it, man. I get it. <laughs> Look, here's the thing. It, it, I, I cannot forget. Um, This was, like two months ago but us playing diablo 4 early when it came out and uh i got some kind of in-game achievement thing and and um brit and charlotte both dm'd me at the exact same time because the achievement was like friend of the bear clan and you both were like yeah bet i bet you are <laughs> Wait, wait, the exact same minute, second, everything. Yes, it was it was perfect wait, wait has anybody actually fucked a bear yet no, uh, I'm, I'm not. I'm not there. fucking Housen. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> oh, I respect Housen. I respect I him as a friend. Look, by man, the way, it, we'll get there. <laughs> for everyone, for everyone listening on podcast services, uh, our buddy Sam Tolbert is here. Um, long time. Sam's a family. Sam's We've just family. given up on introducing guests if yeah, they've been Sam, on a few times. We're like, Sam's look, you get guest. it. Sam's not a guest. He's he's family. Um, uh, consider this, and I literally had not thought about this till now. Like. A druid can take bear form and you can nail the bear, which technically means you can fuck a spider. No, you can. So, no, it would be <laughs> it would be you fuck as a spider, but also no, because I am a druid and I'm like 99 percent certain that it's not going to give you the opportunity. Because It's a camp. You can't do wild shape at camp. So. So. Yeah, he anyway. tried is what he's saying. He's tried. <laughs> and didn't Derek's work like, out in tried, his favor. Derek's like I have tried to fuck as a wolf. I've tried to fuck as a cat. I've tried to fuck as a bear. He's like, but Derek's like, I've tried to fuck as a. There's as also a, a badger. As a badger, like like Derek, Derek simply Derek is a creature of uh, J Derek is a creature of animalistic. Urging. I've actually turned down um all of the advances that have been made upon me so far. So why? Which ones? Um, Asterion, Gale, and uh, Will have all made advances. And Dude, I was like, Gale mm. will not leave. The Shadowheart the not make an advance on you. That girl is because I've told her. To, I've told her to fuck off so many times. No. So, so fuck. we can all agree that Carlac is the horniest character in the game, right? Because. If, like one of her first no, dialogue Car options. No, 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 no. One of her first dialogue options when you're talking about getting the infernal, you know, like the infernal iron to fix her her heart. One of her first, act, like, it's like, I still can't touch you. And she's like, do you want to? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, yes, I do. And she's like, oh, I'd like that. Karlak uh, isn't the horniest. She's probably the most normal in a fucked up way. No, You're just you know horny. The horniest one is Lazel sitting there across camp like, let me smell that dick. Let me you. smell that dick. Like, she's <laughs> too fucking much, Carol. man. Carol I, she literally came up to me. And here's Play the thing, Baldur's Gate 3, folks. <laughs> this you is the only game. Like, we could get into what we've been playing, but it's this. We've been playing Baldur's Gate 3. So, so... So I had not made any. I have passes. news, but it doesn't matter. First, we're talking Baldur's Gate. So I had we're made, talking them balls. I, I had I I had made zero passes at Lazell because I'm not about that get Yankee life, right? And but one day I, I got to give it up to her. She just laid all her cards on the table with like zero build up. She's like, I'm gonna be honest with you. I want to taste you. Yep. And I'm yep. just like, and I and I'm just like. No. And then she mocks you. She's like, she's like, you're going to, she's like, she's like, you're going to wish you had this shit on top of you. 
Oh my god, yeah. yeah. Like yeah, I like, never yeah. I never had her in the party because me and my wife were playing um and we're you know, we're playing like co-op split screen and uh my wife is a fighter and like Carlac's a barbarian, so we just don't need another fighter, right? Mm-hmm. Um so the usual party is is my wife is the fighter, Carlac is a barbarian, I'm a druid and then Asterion is the rogue cuz you just got to have a rogue. Mm-hmm. Um and like I just remember at one point Lazel being like <laughs> like you don't even know how good I throw this ass back and you don't yeah. even want it. Lazel, <laughs> You're lost motherfucker. Lazel, <laughs> you had not spurned me so many times. I yeah. think is the exact like line Lazel yeah. literally is like, "Yo, I want you. Nay, I need you in like, my mouth." And, Lazel, and, and you're like, no, and she's like Go fuck yourself. Yeah, she's straight up like, you're going to fucking miss the world. Lazel is one of those characters that I hate, but I also love. Like, I'm so glad she's in the game because I just love having a character that I'm constantly just like, fuck you. Like, and then they redeem themselves a little bit and then I warm up and then they just do something. I'm like, fuck you. I think she's, I think the cast in Baldur's Gate, all of the supporting characters, right, are incredibly well written for what they're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And like Lazelle is this very abrasive character who you like. There's a huge cultural divide here. There's a huge values oh, dissonance. This is this is fantasy racism at its finest. Her yeah. Race. But like she is she is just this really, really interesting like and you're going to hate her like you, unless you put the time in to get to know her. And even then you're still going to hate her a lot like but but it's 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 a it's a well developed and interesting kind of unlikable party member, and I do respect that. Meanwhile, like again, everyone's falling for Shadowheart, and Shadowheart is like, so this is not even a spoiler. Like evil cult, you know. Here's the thing. Without go ahead, spoiler, go ahead. she's a Southern Baptist. No, you can fix Shadowheart. <laughs> you actually can. Yeah, that's that was, what that's what all men say. That's what I said about a stereo. No, no, no. That's still on the line. One hundred percent can completely change Shadow. I can fix him, but I'm gonna make him worse. I, I, I will <laughs> say, I will say, in this instance, you actually can fix her. Okay, well, but but yeah. I think so, that's kind of the interesting thing here is that like. I think Larian has done such a good job of providing at a glance, you know, at skin deep first glance the stereotypical party members in terms of mm-hmm. what you have to deal with. And then once you talk to them, it doesn't matter whether you like them or not, you're romancing them or not, whatever. However much you use them, if you interact with them at all, you realize there's a lot more there and they sort of flip a lot of those stereotypes on their on their head. A stereon, as you know, the not the straight man, but sort of, you know, the witty Yeah, there's guy nothing the straight group. about that man. No, 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 no. That's, what, that's what I said, not the straight man. But, like, you know, you know, he's the one lampshading all the problems being faced. I think he even yeah. has this great line at one point about, like, why is everyone in this group a weirdo? We wouldn't know if anyone was replaced by a doppelganger because you're all just so strange. But then you, uh, you know, him being the vampire as well and all that, or Carlac and everything going on with her, or Shadowheart, and yet... Cult of Shar raised some eyebrows on me for if anyone has re- like read any of the Forgotten Realms. Oh, here. dude, I grew up Dungeons, on Forgotten Realms books. Right, Dungeons yeah. and Dragons, then that's going to set some alarm bells, but you're... Yeah, I was like, there. a cleric of Shar? And, and really? you realize, like, like, wait a minute, something... The math isn't mathing here. You are way too nice. What's going on? I think they've done a fantastic job. I think job. Shar is neutral evil, right? She's neutral evil alignment. Um, on a good but, day. On but, a very well, and, good and day. And the thing is, is, like, when you do stuff like, you know, saving kids... And, you know, being kind to people like Shadowheart approves. Mm-hmm. She always approves. And so so that right there should tell you that there's more to her story than just being a cleric of an evil goddess. Um, yeah. And I, I think people are so fixated on Shadowheart because they love church ass, right? Like Shadowheart is super duper pious and religious. And everybody's like, no, 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 no. I'm getting that. I'm getting that. I'll, she'll, she'll come around. And uh, I think John, you might be projecting weird. here. Do you go after the girls Let from cook. church camp? I I I, I see <laughs> where he's going with this. I see the vision. No, see, Sam, see, Sam understands. Sam absolutely. I'm not saying Sam, it's right. I'm just saying I understand. No, Sam gets it. Sam absolutely gets it. I think there's. I think that's part of it. I think the other reason is that look, she's a hot half elf. Like what? I think it's interesting how varied everyone's reactions are and everyone's opinions to all of the party members, because <laughs> there's almost nobody who has like a, like the, the one thing is like everyone universally loves Carlac, Right. But yeah, aside yeah. from that, like I've seen people all over the place about Gale, about Asterion, about Shadowheart, mm-hmm. about like, you know, about Lazelle, like everyone it's it's so easy to find people who love these characters and also cannot stand these characters. Not as in like these are bad characters and they make you not want to play the game, but like 
I'm glad I don't have space for you in my party. Fuck you. Right. You know, at least, they, at least the origin companions. Uh, yes, Gale's yes, kind of yes. cool though. Like I love Gale. No, I love Gale's Gale. a good dude. I love Gale, but he's the cool, game. But I was just, worried he was going to show me his dick unprompted. No, but... no, 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 no. So my game actually glitched out. So Gale, did, for did the reason, game glitch out and show you his dick unprompted? <laughs> no. What it did was it like for whatever reason, whenever he's in camp, he's totally nude except for like some underwear. And so <laughs> no, just, that's and normal. Can't, can't figure out how to fix it. So one night he's like, "Come talk to me, friend," in the meadow. So like I sat down next to him, and he's just. <laughs> In his fucking, he's in his fucking little like tidy whities I'm sitting right next to him, and, I'm, and we're just having a serious discussion about magic. And and uh, and and my character, like, just look his, you know, the character models in this game are very expressive and very emotive. Yeah, my character just looks over, and he's like, he's like, <laughs> and I, I was like, where is this going? You want to see a magic trick? It's going. <laughs> Can yeah. I talk about my descend into Baldur's Gate? Yes, yes, because I, I had hear it. no zip, zero intention of playing this game whatsoever. Did not care. Didn't want it. Just wasn't excited for it whatsoever. And then the character creation came out and I was like, all right, well, may maybe wait a minute. All right. All right. So I'm like, you know what? I got a job. I'll buy something for a character creator. There you so, go. so I buy it. I buy it. And I'm like, all right, take take some hours making a character. I went with a tiefling. I'm a pink fucking tiefling. Yes, me like, too. Yeah. Pink. Not me. Full on bubblegum, like pink. And it's the best fucking thing ever. So I'm a sorcerer, tiefling. And I started playing this game and I cannot stop. I can't tell oh, you man. how I've been addicted to this game for fucking since i got it like and i haven't been addicted to a game like this and i don't i don't know how long like i feel like a kid again because i'm literally just eat sleep breathing baldur's gate like yeah you guys want a podcast no i want a fucking baldur's gate y'all are on the time it's a miracle i'm here yeah. I force myself to be on tonight it, like, like it's it's bad like I haven't been this obsessed with something, like I said, and I don't know how fucking long. Like my my TikTok feed, all Baldur's like I bet it's if all I pull Baldur's it up, Gate. Like if I pull it up right fucking now, well my phone restarted. So when it comes up, I'll fucking show you. And like I guarantee you, one of the first ones, it's just gonna be fucking Baldur's Gate. Let's I mean, see. I am so into this second shit. Like, second TikTok was a Baldur's Gate. Like <laughs> like like legit. Like so like yep, like there is second one. Second one fucking Baldur's Gate. Right fucking there. So like I grew so like I grew up reading the Forgotten Realms books. Like Sam, like Drist Orden is my favorite character. Okay. Um, and uh, you know, like I've read, you know, I've read all the ice, I've read all literally every single one of the Drist Orden books. I've read all of, you know, um, like I'm a big Ari Salvatore fan in general, you know, so I've read, you know, Canticle and all that stuff. Um, I'm like extremely already familiar with the world of Forgotten Realms and all the characters and the lore, but I've never played pen and paper D&D. &D. The game sin says never. in chat, does this game really have an ending? I don't even know. I don't have a Baldur's. Who is I don't, she? I don't know. Uh, she's still a mystery to me because I'm still fucking just running around doing my shit. That's actually my son, by the way. Oh, it is. <laughs> it doesn't. I gotta, I gotta be doesn't. careful about what we say. No, 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 no. Dude, dude, he's 15 years old. Who gives a shit? Just right, go with well. it. So we go back to talking about how much of a bratty bottom Mysterion is. Oh, <laughs> this is what I want to talk about. That dude is a bi king. And I know a lot of people say he's flamboyantly gay, which, yes. He's bi. But he's he is bi. also... He's got a some. Is that is a bi depraved I bisexual. Like, I was like, I'm not going to go for him because he's like super gay, blah, blah, blah. I was like, I might go for Shadowheart. And then I saw Carlac and I was like, oh, I'm going to go for Carlac. And then that motherfucker risen the shit out of me. And I was like, God damn it. Sneaking up on me, biting me in camp. Yeah. Like, just. That sounds like your fucking shit, Britt. It, it is helps. my shit. That's why he got me. And I fucking love him because he is a It helps that he has that real high class voice yes. and that very like, mm. but, yeah, well, He's very high like, camp. That, but can very... Be, that can be very hot. And I, yeah. it's, it's something <laughs> different. Like that, you know, usually my person is. Um, He's some shit out of a spicy novel, like for real. 
usually like about the ruffled my shirt, type of people are no. like um H- Halsum, is that his name? Druid? Halsum, yeah. Yeah. That's like my like I'm doing him next, by the way. Yeah. But um <laughs> that is definitely daddy. like my t- like I saw him and the first words out of my mouth were Can I romance him? Can, <laughs> can I can this guy be in my party? Um but yeah, I love Asterian because he is he's so he's got the most Rizzy personality and it's it's they wrote him so well in being geared towards both men and women that it just like seamlessly blends and it's just so good like i was like all right stupid vampire emo vampire got me let's go asterion is definitely my like bitchy best bro and i love having him in the party oh he's so useful he's like they're like, solve this puzzle, and I'm like, a staring, just go open the door. Come, yeah. come, 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 come. <laughs> I love when you leave him behind, and he's like all catty about it. He's like, oh, oh I guess I'll just sit here and do nothing. It man. sounds awful. Yeah. You're going like, to hurt my like, feelings. And then, yeah. when you, and then when you go on an adventure with him, he's like, I don't know how people do this all the time. <laughs> like, yeah. like, I'm exhausted. I mean, mood, right? <laughs> Why don't people invite me to parties? Then I get invited to a party, and I'm like, I don't want to be here. <laughs> like, <laughs> I want to go home and play Baldur's Skate. Yeah. Out of all the NPCs, like, personal stories, like, like you know, that you know, like, Carlex got her Infernal Engine. You know, Asterian's got you know, you know the vampire, the vampire, vampire right. daddy issues, yeah. Right, like Will's got you know that you know all the demon shit the happening. Like, back. Yeah. What do we find? Who do we all find has the most? Like, which story are you invested in the most? Which story are you most interested in seeing the conclusion to? I would say um, Will. I have. To it's become it. Will. It's, it's become, become Will. Yeah. I think I I didn't really care before, but like things have developed in such a way recently that I'm like, oh shit. Oh shit. But also like it's hard because obviously like Carlac and Asterion have really, really immediately engaging stories. Gail's story, if you put the time oh, yeah, in to actually really do with good it. Too. Yeah, yeah. Gail, I'm like some things have developed with Gail's story where I've met like other characters related to his like yes. background. Yes, and, when they come to camp with you. Yeah, yeah and that I'm just like, happened to me. I'm like, this yeah. is heartbreaking. You yeah. know, real yeah. tragedy here. And and I like I love the pathos they put into such a like cheery, likable character, you know. Yeah. Again, well, it's, subverting those stereotypes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know that you get at first glance. Gail was the one that I was going to mention. Yeah. 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 I would say, like, I think you guys would probably agree. I would say, like, the most obvious canon, like, good aligned characters would be Gail, Carlac, and Will. Um, I, I, I would Helsin. peg Carlac. As- Sha- I think Shadowheart too. No, like, I, like, no, like, just the nature. Like in the beginning, she's definitely neutral evil. I think. Simply I don't on think so. Page. She's she page. always likes my good choices. That's it, true, but like she, she also always like, approves draws, them. But she also serves Shar, and like you know, and and Shar is a very evil goddess. Um, I mean, it, again, like I know some Southern Baptists who are good people who should just leave the church. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like like I would like like I would say Carlac is chaotic good, and Will is probably lawful good. Yeah, uh, yeah for sure. Which and is funny, considering I've not looked at it right. Well, yeah, and I would that say Gale right. is a neutral yeah. good character. That, all um, that sounds right to me. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, Asterion probably I would say lawful neutral. I'd say evil no. a little bit. He's fucking chaotic. I, yeah, look, chaotic. What I sort of rules? Actually, he, he's you know, awesome, Asterion but might be chaotic. Asterion he's might chaotic, be chaotic neutral. There we go. He, 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 he supports when you go around kicking puppies. Like that gets his yeah. approval. Up, I okay? find. He, I find Halson extremely boring. I'm sorry. <gasps> like he's I, just he's oh he's he, a he's a he's a nice druid. Like okay. Like he's got I, some, he's got some riz too. Yeah. I I I just I find him John way John too... it just part of the problem is that like John's you just intimidated don't... by him. It's another buff guy in camp and he's like no nope. intimidated by fucking shit. <laughs> Keep talking about it. It convinces us even more. <laughs> let's just, let's just get that out of the way right, right. now. Uh, Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate has been such a joy to play. Um, it is. I'm, I've definitely like in the last week run into more bugs and glitches and things that have been very like, OK, so like it's very funny that people have, have tried to bring up Baldur's Gate as like a cudgel of like, you know, n- no other game can be like this. Like, you know, no, this is an example like how lazy devs are. And it's like, 
this game, people, this game, like, hey, we already talked last week about how ridiculous the circumstances behind this game are. That, sure, like, sure. you know, it, it's it, it got to bring in income for three years, two or three years in early access. It's a studio that knew exactly what the fuck they were doing in a very specialized way. It's a huge studio, tons of time, etc. Um, you know, but like, also, I think people are whitewashing a little bit, like the sh- the shape that this game is in. It's still kind of buggy. It's still kind of messy. Be. Like Ooh, they're working like- on it. You know, it's nothing I've heard game breaking. Performance is very hit or miss. Like if you're using DX11 or Vulcan, like depending on your nope. hardware. It's been good for me. Carlac has been like breaking people's games. It's been good for me, but I've heard I've heard people say use direct. It, do not use Vulcan. It's, okay, it, okay. It cripples game performance. We'll see what the console ports look like, right? I, so, right. Um, is anybody else playing it on Steam Deck? Because that's what I've been playing it on. No, no. Just on my no. desktop. So I desktop. can tell you right now, like. So, like, granted, I've made some some modifications. Like, you know, I've set oh, some stuff at medium. I've got some stuff at high. I've mm-hmm. got God rays on. Um, I've got, you know, I've got I, I've capped the frame rate at thirty frames a second. And I'll be honest with you, it runs fine. Um, it actually runs quite well on on the Steam Deck and and the Steam. And the thing is, is like, you know, this is a game where you don't need sixty frames a second for Baldur's Gate three. Like, you just you just don't. What you need is for the st- frame rate to be stable because nobody likes an unstable frame rate. But this Mine's is a game. Been, where- I haven't ha- hardly had any issues. Like, I haven't had any glitches or like, like I've uh, had a few things. Where, Baldur's like, Gate ate my out. clothes. I I went to camp and and uh, that didn't happen to me. My my clothes and underwear disappeared and did, off my I character. Be mad. Right, but that's, then I was just walking around camp with my dong and out, and it was like. <laughs> And it's it was like, like again, I gotta, a feature, not a I gotta go talk to these people, and I'm just here with my fucking dick physics, like wiggling in the wind as I walk. See, I haven't had anything like that. That just sounds like a story Derek tells the morning after he like got nearly blackout drunk. He's like, last night my clothes just disappeared, and this morning my dick physics were weird. Like, listen, it's, let's it's not talk about the face. charity streams like, here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> can i just say like, one thing uh and my friend brought this up to me um rom that's usually in chat he was like i really you know when you play games like dragon age mass effect um like that like usually the romance is like a slow burn and that's like the reward you get at the end of the game right mm-hmm. whereas i like in this game like you get the romance you get the relationships and you get to progress those relationships um by you know just talking to them and you know going adventuring with them and shit so it's like it's nice to establish a relationship in a game and then continue to build off of it and so, continue to work at it yeah some characters and i like how it's different for different characters some characters are a slow burn right yeah. some characters want to fuck right yeah, up so front right like and that's different people literally everybody everybody wanted to fuck me after that party <laughs> at that party i was like holy shit like what's happening i don't even know if we're talking about the game anymore um i, I want to point out something in chat that my son said um he said i think it's strange how other game devs think Baldur's gate 3 is too high of a standard for rpg games and that's something that i actually meant to bring up i don't um, i don't know that that's really the right way to frame like i th- i still think that original and look i'm not somebody who wants to rail on any individual outlet because i think there's too much of that shit going on and i know too many good people at ign but like that one however, video about Baldur's gate 3 sucked shit like it came from a very reasonable thread of an indie dev saying like hey here's some reasonable expectations of like how this is like this is not one size fits all um rami rami ismail uh did an excellent thread was it just earlier today talking about like i think i, I don't you know talk. that like under under the current economic conditions under which games are made like it is a fucking nightmare to spend the kind of money that gets spent on Baldur's gate Right. And like, I'm seeing a lot of smart people point out that like if Baldur's Gate three was the sure model for success, then all games would be Baldur's Gate. And instead, they're all going for Genshin Impact. Right. And like, also, like, and sorry. And I, I know y'all talked about this last week, so I don't want to rehash. Sure, too but much we can bring it up. Some, yeah, for sure. Like, up, dude, this this is there's good. one particular comment that almost no one has br- bringing up and it's kind of starting to ruffle my jimmies here. But it is the fact that. Larry and themselves have explicitly said they're not doing this again. Like Larry has yeah. outright said, our next game, we don't know if it'll We're be Baldur's go Gate 4 or Divinity Original Sin 3. It's going to be smaller. 
whatever it is. Yeah. And and like and I don't think this is an issue now, but they also explicitly said if it didn't overperform, they were going to have to lay people off. I don't think that's going to be an issue oh, now. There go John. Uh oh. Bye, bitch. We lost him. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I don't want to fucking hear this. <laughs> No, he probably had an internet drop or something. So, so it's just that was weird. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't want to rehash too much of that, but like people need to be aware of. Look at the circumstances. Look at everything. They had it's, it's complicated. three years to polish Act One, and I don't think it's a coincidence that once people are hitting Act Two and especially Act Three, they're starting to notice more bugs and performance problems. Right. I don't. I think. think that's I think it's complicated, and I think people trying to use both like. The way I put it is like, yes, taking risks with stuff like Baldur's Gate can pay off. Yes, a bunch of the stuff people love about Baldur's Gate. We've, we've spent all this time talking primarily about character writing, right? Mm -hmm. And you could have done this in a way smaller game, um, you know, but but like it can pay off. It's not guaranteed to. And it's a huge risk. I'm right? glad it paid off. I'm, I'm glad, glad it did. I, I am too. Um, if it convinces even a couple more people to make like obviously smaller in scale but like well-written crpgs then good so, so uh, the brit please go ahead uh, so i was just gonna say like the only thing that i agree with is that games can be released without shit ton of dlc right like yes you don't have sure, to work sure. on a game so long but you can definitely polish a game pretty well before releasing it and just not include dlc and it still fucking be incredibly like worth its money you know like yeah. and i i think that's where we're getting to a point now with the games it's, it's like is this game going to be worth my money like am yeah. i going to be buying dlc after dlc um you know is this game even going to be completed or do i need to play dlc like final fantasy 15 is a great example of a game that probably i would have liked a lot better had they not released like six seven dlc that weren't also, you had to watch story. a bad animated series and a bad animated movie. Oh I don't. I mean, I don't with have an Cersei issue with Cersei as Luna as Freya. I, I have more of an issue with the fact that they canceled the three most interesting DLCs. That was yeah. the bigger issue to me. So sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. No, I have no. You're right. I, 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 like, I'm a Final Fantasy 15 defender, and I'll agree yeah. with you wholeheartedly there. Um, so I, 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 go ahead, Britt, please. Oh, sorry. So I was just gonna say, like, I do think that the games industry does need to be better about that in an aspect, like. If you're going to release a game, release it whole, like release it as it is, like patch it. Fine. Do whatever you have to do. Like if shit happens, but don't release a game Pokemon and then just kind of be like, oh, this stuff's broken. All right. We'll patch it in as we go. Like keep playing. And then don't. Like, and then don't. You know, got that it's Jedi like, Survivor game is still busted to hell and they're already planning new ports of it. And it's like, yeah. It's so Fuck that's what, like I feel like that's a standard that we should be setting across the board. Yeah. But like as far as like making every game like Baldur's Gate, no. As far as like you know, and, Sam, and, like what you said, oh, like go ahead. And to be clear, a lot of that's publisher driven, not developer driven, right? Like There's if you allow too. a lot of these developers, I'm sure if if you allowed like if Game Freak was allowed to spend the money and time on fucking Pokemon games they would look and run better and come out a lot less frequently. But instead, the Pokemon company, and it's weird because Nintendo's usually really good about this. It's very much a Pokemon problem with annual merchandising. Um, but the Pokemon company demands the annual release. So they just fucking can't, right? Conversely, Nintendo basically lets these games get <laughs> developed and polished months past when they could release. I mean, you just know? look at Tears of the Kingdom, which right. launched early But then again, this Nintendo year. has, like, the biggest war chest in the gaming industry. So, you know, yeah. they can afford to eat, you know, a, a dozen console failures. At, you I wanna, know. If you don't mind, I, I want to circle back to, real quick, to, to what we were talking about when Larian said, you know, hey, whatever we're doing next is going to be smaller. Like... They're saying that now. I'm not sure I believe that's actually going to be the case. Um, I, think, I, think I, I think they're going to reassess that after the success of Baldur's Gate, well, for that, sure. And that's kind of what I'm saying, right? Because like it hasn't even come out on PS5 yet, and this is already the highest rated PC game of all time. I think um, it can still be true, though, because I think Baldur's that there's got to be at the top, y'all. There's got to be a lot that they've learned Barbie in the process of making uh, Baldur's Gate 3 that would allow them to make something new and similar in a more streamlined fashion, right? They Taking had to have learned time a lot at from a lower this. cost. Right. Yeah. To to create something that is is 
feasibly similar, maybe with a little fat cut off around the edges where it wasn't necessary. Yeah, but here's you the know. thing, though. Here's but, the thing, though. I refuse to believe right now, anyway. I refuse to believe that their next game is not going to be Baldur's Gate Four. No, just, it's I, uh, it's not oh, going to no. be because it's going to be fucking Neverwinter Nights Three, dude. God, like, I love that. Please. Please. that. That's also possible. That's all. Oh, yeah. I you also nice know Dale. it could be an Icewind Dale. It, I, they're not making Icewind Dale. I would love another Icewind Dale, <laughs> but I think Neverwinter Nights Three is. It's going to be Neverwinter Nights. Yes. So it, I but, do. Okay, go ahead. No, I, Britt, I was just going to say you all know we're going to get at least two expansions for this game. Oh, we'll, no way we'll, they, we'll see. We'll see. But I do want to say, like, Sam, you brought up the point that, like, if it didn't perform well, they were going to start cutting people. I do want to say that did they did not cut anybody through this whole process. There was no, no crunch and they did not get rid of people. So that's that's positive. Like, that's something that should also be like celebrated and something that should be standard like don't let people work on your game and then fucking cut them before they've even been released like what larian found success with divinity you know divinity you know divinity 2 this there with baldur's gate 3 doing what it's doing they're part of the like they're one of the big boys now oh yeah definitely. like they're definitely. they're they're they have ascended like they're they're fucking up there now. I think it's also exciting and to see a studio really succeed on this level too. and get like that kind of name recognition. Right. Like, that kind of a bump outside of the US and Japan. Right. This is a Belgian. It's Belgian. Right. Studio. They have some support teams in other countries. I think there's one in Spain. They have an, like an office yeah. in Spain. But, yeah, but like, like, that's, that's, that's good. Is that's Belgium, healthy. Yes. It can only be healthy for the game industry for like more studios in more countries and they're going to be able to hire more people and open more locations after this yeah um, yeah and and the thing is i don't think anybody on this podcast i certainly was not expecting Baldur's gate 3 to be the runaway success success that it has been i didn't I thought, give a shit about it i did not care about it and i'm addicted to it now like i, I thought it would be so it's weird for me because I intentionally stayed away from the early access because I didn't want to be me like and Sam playing exact it same. and it iterating. Yep. And by the way, if you want to shock, go look at some of the old early access videos. This game has changed a lot. It has, oh yeah, it was not it great. When it first came a out. lot of stuff. Yeah. It, it, the polish level is night and day. Um, so it, it's a weird situation for me because I conceptually knew about a lot of what they were doing, and in theory it was appealing to me. But outside of what was demanded by work, I have stayed away, and so it's just been such a breath of fresh air. I mean, uh, n not to go on about it too long, but I mean, Britt, what you were saying about feeling like a kid again, I have not felt this way about a game since I was 13 playing Dragon Age Origins. Right, like it, exactly. It is just, I have very just fallen in love. I said last like, week that this is this captures the old Bioware magic, yeah, which is funny considering that the original like D and D games mostly came from Bioware. Correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. No, like, no, they did. Yeah, yes, the, they uh, did. The first two, the first Baldur's yeah. Gate games did, and like, and Neverwinter Nights and, one as well, and, and Neverwinter Nights one two was Obsidian. Um, but like, and and don't give me look. I have defended Dragon Age two for like what it, it was developed under fourteen months. That's absurd i think it had great writing i think boulders gate 3 is a phenomenal what could have been if bioware had doubled down on what made origins yes special. if ea In hadn't turned bioware elements. into what it is like this is what we would be getting out of bioware yeah you know and so again like, i think that all of the magic of this game and a lot of the things that we're latching on to a lot of this stuff could have been replicated in a smaller game a shorter game with less stuff in it because I think a lot of us are in love with the magic and the decision making rather than, you know, specifically the fact that it's a 150 hour campaign or whatever. Oh, That's I am literally scumming the shit out of this game. Oh, you better do. fucking believe it. Yeah, Derek, the, the fact it, that it's 150 it's hours is the Absolutely. least appealing part to me. Right. By far. Exactly. So think about this. Think about this. So I'm looking at the Steam charts right now. Right. Bear in mind, this game is not out on PS5 yet. It's only yeah. out on it's only out on PC. Um, peak players, almost 900,000. Um, yeah. this game came out last week. Hours played 187,687, 542. Um, that is more hours played than Apex Legends, Team Fortress 2, Call of Duty, PUBG, Grand Theft Auto 5, and Phasmophobia. And to be fair, to that be is fair, nuts. A lot of that comes from people who have been playing the early access like over and over and over again. As Those it, stats are in there for sure. So, yeah. but right. like even well, like, so, more than more than, eight, more than Team Fortress Two or Apex Legends is fucking nuts. It cracked the top ten of like most concurrent users on Steam, and that's yeah. 
Huge. I mean, John, you, you asked about if anyone saw this being a runaway success. I think it was you who, who asked that. I thought it was going it to be successful. I did not think it was going to be this success. Not to this I, I thought it was like, going to be celebrated. The Dungeons and Dragons is far more popular. The pandemic gave a, you know, made that boom. Um, you know, it, it's in more popular culture. It's a name, you know, big name recognition for a game that a lot of people thought would never happen. I thought this was going to be a good success. It being like as popular as it is has kind of blown my mind yeah can i, I can i kind of shift into like you can something that i personally love about the game and something that i've always been kind of insecure about playing D D. um it lets me get comfortable with like the world of D, the rolling the stats and everything at my own pace yes. um so like th one of the biggest things that i hate about D D is that like I don't know what stats go into what or, you know, what this kind of role means. And it's just like I don't play consistently enough to constantly have those things uh, memorized. So I love the fact that I get to kind of like learn at my own pace, like nobody's sitting there waiting for me to make a decision. Like I get to go through and figure out like what stats affect what. And um, the only one I always knew was charisma. So take with that what you will. <laughs> and um <laughs> but it's just it's been really cool to kind of just get into the world of D, D on my own at my own pace um with set storytelling um that i can just kind of learn from and um just pick up on and it's just i've been really enjoying it that way like i'm excited to play D, &D now because i'm like I'm even so in battle even in battle, I'm like, I know what I can do now. I because... hope I don't let you guys yeah. down when it's no, finally whoa, time. No, whoa, no, Brit, I got the fucking player's handbook. I got the, uh, I'm, I, I got the, uh, I got the guide to monsters. I'm, I am at, uh, in uh, next week. I am attending my first um, pen and paper D and D session. I'm like, Ooh. I'm, I'm fucking, I'm fucking all, which is like extremely then, neurotypical it, response to playing Baldur's Gate three. But right. also, <laughs> it's a little weird that I never played pen and paper and D&D, considering I grew up reading the Forgotten Realms novels. On, on novels, um, everyone was like, "John, you're so into to Forgotten Realms. Why have you never played pen and paper D and D?" And I'm like, "I just never bothered." Um, but I've 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 got some dice on the way. Like I'm ready to fucking rock and roll. Yeah, like it's it's like, just been like even doing the battles. Like I'm learning how turns work. Like yes, I can move, but I can only move a certain amount. And before I lose my opportunity to attack, right? Like yeah. I can't just move and then attack. Like I can I can step forward a little bit and then attack. Um, I can see Derek just ascending as as we're talking about this, Brit. I know like, something. The else good news that... is when we do play, like I know all this shit like the back of my hand, so I can I can walk everyone through everything. So. Yeah. Um, so that's like, that's, what's been nice for me is I've always been, I've always kind of shied away from D and D because I feel like it makes me feel stupid. And that's like one of my biggest, like triggers is feeling like I'm stupid and don't know anything. So Weird, I've always kind of like, like literally one of the smartest people I know. No. Um, so I've always just kind of like, whenever people ask me to play D and D, I'm like, I don't, well, I'm really, like really new. Like I don't super know anything i've only played a few campaigns and um but now like i feel really comfortable like i'm excited like i want to build all these characters like you know i know what feats are good now i know what starting spells are good to take at least for like mages I, and sorcerers and right i've already got my character ready to go on D, &D beyond oh ron pips <laughs> no it's actually not ron pips um Speaking I am of, a, I, sam your fighter john i'm assuming I am a I am a drow fighter. I decided to reroll. I decided to change. I tried as a drow bard, um, but so this I, is, I okay. I went back to fighter for one reason. Um, I I really like the superior the superiority die that you get with um uh you get that you with know, monk too with the battle um you, you know because you've got you can go either champion or eldritch knight or you know battle master and i really like the four superiority die you get with battle master and also the fact that's that, how i have lazo yeah and 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 like also the fact that you get um you get uh you know extra attacks and uh, i just you know, I enjoyed being a bard, but I, but I had Withers um, reroll me as a fighter because fucking it's Withers, like, fucking Withers. Dude. What, what are you playing, Sam? Uh, so I am playing a Dragonborn bard. Actually. Oh, okay, fun. Yeah, so it's a, actually it's actually really fun because um, and this. So we've all got a different perspective. Like we all kind of got like every. Class. Oh yeah, yeah. 
It's um, I did. So I will say this. However, I found out about a companion that you can only get if you are playing, uh, shall we say, evil, uh, to say the least. And I found out how hot that potential companion is. So I have made a I rolled up um, like an evil tiefling sorceress just because I, I need to bang oh. that drow. So uh, but that'll be playthrough two. I, I just yeah. had to go off and do that. That character creator is dangerous. I know the creator is And then you have to do it again. I hate that. I'm like, okay, perfect. That's the funniest thing. That's the funniest thing they could possibly do. (laughs) And they were like, no context for what this is. What's a guardian? Don't worry about it. Here's the real question, Sam. Which penis did you go with? Uh, So Dragonborn actually only have the one option. It's just just the one. Yep, just the one. Oh, your sounds like penis options, bye. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm like, I'm like, which which penis did you go with? My kids, like, okay, I'm out. Right, um, Rom, it's hey, penis E hey, for sure. Get that metal, love you, pal. I'm proud of you. Um, like, I, I don't even think it was labeled penis E. I think it's literally just penis. Penis, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's penis. Yeah, um, it's the armor which is plating. weird because like it's a dragon, right? Like, like do reptiles have penises? Like, is that how we're not getting into this conversation? We're moving on. Um, <laughs> So, uh, to get us off of Baldur's Gate, because we've been on Baldur's Gate for 40 minutes, plus get on the, the, like, the whole Baldur's last Gate. episode. I got, Play Baldur's I got, Gate. I got Play some Baldur's, Baldur's Gate. Gate you can get on, Derek. I think me and Sam have also been playing some games for reviews that we're not allowed to talk about. So, like, I, I am sorry, my responses are limited. You must ask me the right question. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, it's just like, they're they're just awash in a sea of games right now. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, really so, interesting stuff. I, so, I we have... We have Sorry, you can, can I say one more thing, Derek? Yes, you not may. about Baldur's Gate. Okay. Um. Uh, I downloaded uh an old old classic and uh on on Steam Deck, uh the Chronicles of Mystara collection. Oh man, yeah. Chronicles of Mystara and and uh and um and its sequel. I can't the names escaping me, but classic Capcom beat 'em ups set in the Dungeons and Dragons world. If like you can get them on Steam right now for five bucks. John, why aren't you playing Air Guys? That's clearly the best fighting game. No. No, Chronicles of Mystara, and 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 I think it's Sorrow over Mystara is the sequel. I can't remember, but they are fantastic Capcom side-scrolling beat 'em ups uh, set in Dungeons and Dragons. Like like you can't go wrong. Fucking awesome shit. Nice. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Air yeah. guys. So um, we've got we got two things that we wanted to talk about that were not just what we've been playing. Um, the first of these things being um, Microsoft. Xbox introducing a new like moderation system. God, I am sorry if you all are hearing all that dog barking in the background. I'm not. Let okay, them. Let them. Good. Let them. Let them cook, them, Derek. Let them cook. <laughs> they're on. They something. saw somebody across the street and they're very upset. Um, but uh, Microsoft has introduced this new like strike based um like moderation system for uh. My understanding is it's primarily based on like in-game chat and like messaging and stuff, right, Sam? That is correct. It's based on like what you say in uh, game lobby chat, like open open chat, or like you're messaging to other people. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, Only eight strikes, you say? Well, so here's but, here's how the people system are misreading works. some of that. But so, sorry, go go. go yeah, on here. here is how the system works: is everybody mm-hmm. is going to start at zero strikes? Um, you can get up to a maximum of eight strikes. Uh, strikes last for six months at an infraction. Um, supposedly each strike is going to be reviewed by a human, uh, for moderation, right, Sam? They are, cl- they are claiming That's that what there they're is claiming. no AI, AI usage or anything. I'm, I hope they, I hope that is correct. I, right. we'll see. With but a I built-in appeals process and with right. different types of infractions being like more, like more strikes, right? It's not eight. This is where I've seen a lot of people get confused. It's not eight individual actions. It's like, you know, depending on how, what you did, it can be more than one strike accumulated yeah. at once. So I have the a question way, regarding this, but continue. Just, yeah. I, I had just know I had my hand up for the so end. So the way it breaks down um, in the examples that they give, which is not exhaustive, they say, but these are like the most common things. Profanity and cheating are worth a strike sexually inappropriate messages and harassment or or bullying are two strikes and hate speech specifically is three strikes, which I assume from the way that they describe it in the article that they posted 
um, I assume that like the highest one supersedes. So like obviously the majority of hate speech is going to be harassment and bullying, but it's going to get the three, not the two, because hate speech was involved. Um, but I don't think they combine it. I don't think it's like five because it was bullying and also hate speech. Right, that's right. that's how I t- how I read their examples given. Um, I think, and then they have like be- the strike system is like depending on the number of strikes you get. Um, is like you get a suspension for X amount of time uh, where it drastically ramps up as you get to higher numbers of strikes. Mm-hmm. Um, up I think to one strike is just one day, but like it, it one and two strikes is a day. Three strikes is three days. Four strikes is a week. Five is two weeks. Six is three weeks. Seven is two months. And then eight is a whole year. Eight is your, 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 and I assume again, um, I didn't read what, this specifically is a ban from i assume it's from like chat and messaging okay yes it's it's the social features um so well see, see here's the thing it says multiplayer so i don't know that is, games can i don't have, know. like in-game chat like yeah, yeah, chat yeah lobbies as opposed to the way it's text. worded I, I still i think it's meant to be just the social features they're not gonna like stop you from playing games um, uh, n- no, that's that's correct. That, yeah, that is correct. So here's here's I, I think there's good and bad to this. Mm-hmm. I think it is good to have a system like a, a more transparent and like direct system where humans are moderating and mm-hmm. and reviewing all of these things. And especially like I think they're they're um, they're prioritization where like hate speech is the thing that gets the most strikes is probably correct for where the problems lie in gaming, right? Hate speech is the worst thing. Um, sexually inappropriate messages, harassment and bullying are, are, you know, also more severe. And then like profanity and cheating are not as big a deal. Profanity is a weird one to me. Cause like, I assume they just mean profanity in games that are not rated M Right? I assume Dude, profanity like go- saying like "fuck you, you, you're a piece of shit player." Yeah, well, but then know? isn't that harassment? Games, like, stuck at life. I, yeah. I think that there, there's context. Is like, are you going into an E10 10 plus you right. know, game that has multiplayer support? Yeah, and cursing out a bunch of nine year old. I'm pretty sure if you're playing like, like Apex Legends and you're like, you know, dude, you did. So- for both, yeah, to and be I hope honest. you did like, dude, you did so fucking good. Congrats! Like, that's yeah, not a message. Th- th- that's gonna they're get not, you modded. They're not gonna. I don't think that's how it's gonna work. No. Now, here's my criticism, uh, Mm -hmm. because I sat and thought through this, and basically what this boils down to is a permission to use one hate speech every three months. Because... (laughs) That's the problem with math. Yes. Uh, Like, and they've just outlined that you get a free hate speech every three months. Because what happens is you you do it... One hate speech every three months. Let's say I'm playing... They know their community so fucking well that they're like, all right, guys, listen, we'll let one slide. Because if I'm playing... (laughs) If I'm playing, like, like Fortnite, and I throw out, you know, just just blatant hate speech, right? Um, I'm gonna get three strikes which will ban me from chat for three whole entire days uh and then that goes away in six months so then three months later i do another hate speech and that gets me up to six so i'm I'm, i might be have to be quiet for three whole weeks um but then like in a few months the 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 first hate speech goes away and you'll never hit eight so like what this is basically said is it is it is like obviously this is there's not people who are going to sit around and go like okay I'm good I get one hit. like this is my cool down this is my my cycle but like the fact that that's possible that you can just indefinitely do one hate speech every three months um, conf- one confirmed by Microsoft actionable hate speech does mean um, that the system is not fully thought out to me right so, like so I will say this I yeah. agree however. I think the people who are going to be using this speech and targeting it for it aren't going to be smart enough to fucking do this math. You're probably right. And these people don't care. They're going to fucking keep doing it. They're not going to be smart and be like, eh, they're going to fucking keep doing it. Like, yeah. And, and like, look, it's, I agree. And, and that's, that's the problem with math. That's the problem of it's the engineering versus humanities, blah, blah, blah. Like, that's yeah, the problem yeah. trying to do this is, 
you cannot have a perfect system where they outline things fairly and explain how it works and are transparent and allow you to appeal and also not have weird possible loopholes like this. Like right. there is going to be some weirdness. I would not be surprised at all if some of these numbers get tweaked in the coming months or the coming years. I would not be surprised if they have to adjust a couple of things. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm exhausted. I'm just happy that there is. I, I think this is broadly a step in the right direction. I think that can probably be agreed on because I'm tired of reporting, you know, on TikTok or especially uh, Twitter, you know, Reich Warrior 1488. And it says no right. content found. It's like, fuck you, TikTok. Most you, most platforms absolutely. simply do not actually moderate. There are no human beings who look at this stuff. It's just... Right. You know, basically, like, it, this is this is like a, a, a fucking inside baseball, but, like, if you pay attention to this stuff, you know that the way most of these social platforms work is they do not actually act upon something unless, like, an algorithm finds something very obvious, like the N-word spelled out because it's in a, like, a, a, a list of, like, flag phrases, mm -hmm. or it just gets enough reports that it triggers manager like an something. escalation yeah, so for even if somebody you, people use stars or put a space in it like i hope people read it and be like i know what they're implying yeah. like exactly um, so my question was like kind of following that do you think this has any connection to um the blizzard activision acquisition because their fan base is not the best that's an, an angle I hadn't considered, but I mm. don't think it's impossible. And especially because I think right now, almost everything going on in the in Xbox has something to do with Activision Blizzard, right? They're trying to be on their best fucking behavior and put on their best face because they want to win that. They've wanted to win the right to do the merger and they want to win the PR battle with the public and say, right. we're the good guy in all this, right? So I, I mean... It can not a, in, I think it was probably in the works regardless, but I wouldn't be surprised if this. OK, I'm trying to think of how to say this carefully. Um, being in a merger with them, they have access to analytics data that they would not otherwise be privy to. They still don't have access to everything. That's how yeah. this works, legally speaking. And right. I would not be surprised if some of that analytics data that they in that algorithm data they got made them escalate certain plans. Yeah. Or I also don't go, think you need oh. the data to be like, oh, we fucking know how bad shit is and stuff like so, WoW like and Call wow of Duty. And Overwatch. That too. That, Overwatch that too. Yeah. Sure. You know, For sure. so, like, I, I think this this raises an, an, an even more pertinent issue you for you know guys like me for example who have a 15 year old right and and it, who and he plays a ton of apex like a, right now apex legends is his favorite game um monitor like parents need to be monitoring what is happening as best you in, can but that's in, fucking in, as best hard you can in chat channels right what do you, now, do you sit next to him while he but, plays video games all the time like i, I normally you know. do but that's because we game in the same room yeah right like like we kind you of have a very kind different of a relationship with you know that's a, that's a cool yeah, I, I, that's, that's good you can yeah. that's very yeah. cool that's very yeah. good that's i know awesome. like 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 you know you guys you know uh, sam hasn't been also here, but you leaving guys, you, you know guys, I, the american like, process of of like parents need to take responsibility for their kids hasn't worked out very good in the grand scheme of things because like, it's gotten know, like, us like, a lot of evil racist little shits but so like but here's the thing it's not just racism no, that, no. That sure it's also right? the, the just, fucking sexual harassment, right? It, and it, it's also not just that I'm concerned with, right? So, <laughs> so my son, like, he's got his own little corner here. He calls it. Uh, he calls himself the juice. So he calls it the juice box. I'm. I'm gonna out him there. I love this fucking idiot. Uh, what a he's, what a great kid. What he's a lad. A, he's such a himbo. He's at, like I remember when Derek was like John. He could not be more your son. Like like if and like, then the juice box game. Um. But uh, so it's also like, and this is going to sound like, bear with me here, proselytizing. Don't preach to my kid about things like religion. That's my job. Oh, yeah. Like um, that weirdo who is doing the, the gospel in Fortnite or whatever. So, and that's what I'm that's what I want to bring up. Right. So there's this guy, there's this YouTuber who goes around and hops into hops into Fortnite chats with oh, like God. kids like preteens and starts pre and he's very open about yeah, it. Yeah, there are fewer fewer people I want talking to my fucking kids unasked than goddamn youth pastors. Yeah. Like and, no. he's, and he's like, "Hey, have you you guys know about Jesus Christ?" And uh you know, have you accepted Jesus Christ into your heart? And I swear to God if that man ever hops into a, a chat with my kid, I'm going to be like, "Dude, if you want to fucking meet God, I will arrange it right now." <laughs> like 
like like i will send you to god immediately if you <laughs> that's don't, a good not, one if yeah. you don't leave my fucking kid alone but like, like i think i think having like a system like this is good right i think having a transparent system is good i think if microsoft really means it like having human beings review all or even just most of these infractions right is good like that's the sort of stuff that has to happen and i know that's difficult to do at scale but these companies have the money to pay people 18 bucks an hour to sift through and be like yeah that's a hate speech you know what i mean um something and um you know i think it's good like their priorities are good and i think they're trying to find a balance between punishing and forgiving and also like allowing people to like especially young people to fuck up face a small consequence and go okay i'm not doing that again because i tell you what if i caught a three-day ban as a 14 year old in an online game that would be all it would take to scare me straight right this is a very, but, but i was wait. a better 14 year old than most so i'm gonna make you guys super proud of my kid right now a little while back i know I he was, yells up yells at the uh racists on the he, voice chat i was walking downstairs and kid. didn't realize i was here and he was yelling at somebody in apex legends and i stopped and apparently i found out later this guy had called one of his friends like you know the f slur uh you know you know homophobia you guys know what the slur is and Jaden was he was like he was like again like you know he didn't know i was there but he's like if i ever hear you say that word again i'll straight fuck you up and good kid good i was like i was like your kid yeah i was like (laughs) jane's like i'm not even fucking around motherfucker i'm not even fucking around and uh, he's like he's like i'll straight end you i'll just end you you understand i'll just straight i'll just i will straight fuck you up like just talking like a 15 year old you know right right and, uh, and not the best like, at being threatening, but they've got they've got their heart in it, and you got to respect that. Well, Jaden, they like, fucking he's mean like, it. Jaden also got like weirdly jacked because he's been doing crew for the past year, and 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 he like he came up to me a, a, like a few months ago. He's like, he's like all father. He that's his name for me. He calls me all father. He says all father. I hate it. He says he says I have a new title. I was like, what's that? He's like the quad father, and I was like, if you ever call yourself that again in my presence. I will literally power bomb you through a table. Like I like you will not call yourself. And he's like the quad father. Like <laughs> anyway. Yeah. I just think it's I think it's a step in the right direction. Like as many flaws as it has. Like I think just holding people more accountable for the actions, especially with the acquisition of Blizz- Blizzard and Activision. Um, it's a really good move because Blizzard notoriously has and, and Activision notoriously has people that are pieces of shit and um, need to get their need to get their little asses handed to them um, yeah, they do. politely. I will say that impolitely. Um, let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> well, then we'd get banned from Twitch. But um, yeah, I just think that you know this this should be a standard like we there shouldn't be an an excuse for racism there shouldn't be an excuse for slurs there shouldn't be an excuse for misogyny like it's just it's so it's just stupid like and it's so funny like being a female in gaming it's like dudes only have one thing to say to you when they find out you're a girl and it's go back to the kitchen Go make me a sandwich. And I'm like, you guys are so fucking dumb that you can't even think of your own insults. You have to piggyback off insults that are like 10, 15, 20 fucking years old because you're so dumb that you can't come up with your own. What's funny is that these guys always look like a fucking soup sandwich. Oh my God. It's, oh, I get heated talking about this shit. Sandwich. Like, like, not to, not to insult anybody's looks here, but the guys who always are like, "Hey, got a call? Yeah, why don't you get back in the? Why don't you leave Apex and bring me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, sweetheart?" These guys always look, always look like somebody ladled out. And we lost him. Some chicken noodle soup <laughs> he, he on a fucking piece of bread. Like, <laughs> yeah, that. What's that? No, we what just you, you, you froze up for a, for a minute. It was just funny. Uh, um. Anyway, yeah, these mother, yeah, these motherfuckers are weak as shit. Yeah. Now here is here is here is my I think that there is one easy massive improvement to this system mm-hmm. that I think uh Microsoft should should look into doing which is I think there needs to be a way for repeat offenders 
to automatically gain additional strikes for their infractions. Right. Right. Because if the easy solution is like I am I am a calculating dickhead and could do one hate speech every three months, there needs to be a system that says, dude, we've hit this dude with the with the hate speech infraction three separate times. Three strikes does not cut in it. You're up to four or five however many strikes per Some infraction. Some sort of escalation at the extreme yes. end. If yeah, you are a be- repeat infraction on things like sexual harassment, right? Harassment and bullying, hate speech, those sorts of things. I don't give a shit about cheating. I truly do not care about cheating in online games. I have bigger problems in my life. Mm-hmm. But like the actual nasty shit that drives people out of um, out of communities, like I think that that stuff needs... Like, if you're a repeat offender, then you start working off a multiplier, right? And and eventually, the problem gets solved one way or another. Um, Mm -hmm. But, like, I don't have an exact mechanic system for that, but I think that, I think Microsoft should be looking at that, right? Because eventually, we've told you to stop saying the N-word, like, you're still doing it. You just, you know, I'm not saying you have to take permanent access away, even though I think that that shouldn't be off the table, but like, I know that's probably too far for a lot of folks, but we should get to a point where you're such a regular, it it should be, be. but people are going to be like, that's too far. But like, we should get to a point where we're telling a woman you don't know, telling a woman you don't know, like in a video game that you're playing with, like, you know, show me your tits should eventually just be like, blow me. you know how many times I've been like, peachy, you a girl fucking blow me. I'm like, who even are you? And I bet your fucking dick smells like cheese. Get the (laughs) fuck out of here. You nasty. That's gross. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. It's bad. It is gross. Your dick probably looks like yogurt and butt hair. uh, But, but yeah, so like, that's my big, I think, I think if something like that happened, I would be like, all, like a hundred percent behind this new mm-hmm. system. I right. do think there's a lot of good decisions being made. I just think that like, if I can in the span of five minutes, sit down and figure out how to, how to game it forever. We've, we've got to patch that. Right. Right. That's the problem. So easy. A five-year-old could figure it out. Therefore they need to hire a five-year-old uh, who can come up with the solution for that particular hole. Um, Derek, I, I do got to take issue with one thing you said. Yeah. When uh, uh, when you said that you don't try have me, bitch. Okay, that's fine, motherfucker. <laughs> Dick when, cheese when, smelling when ass. Let's go. What do you got to say? Like, all right, you, all right. Listen up, you silly little bitch. When you said that you when you said that you're okay with cheating, I don't I don't agree because when you when you cheat not when you cheat the game, you cheated not only the game but there yourself. it is. You you there, didn't there, there grow. You didn't improve. You took a shortcut. And Outside you of a tournament setting, no, because look, I used to be thinking, sir. Good, good, good. good. You keep talking. The the I've heard that. Nothing yeah. was risked. Nothing was gained. It's sad that you don't know the difference. I mean, I'm gonna save scum the fucking hell out of Baldur's Gate. You can, yeah, you I do it too, Brit. Say what you want. Say what you I do fucking want. I don't I, give I do a it shit. Alfred, Derek, I'm sorry, I, I yelled at you. I didn't mean it. It's okay. It's okay. I've gotten used to it. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I want to be clear that I do not yell at Derek. No, <laughs> like, Derek is my best friend. My no, I do not, not yell at Derek. T-shirt is literally is every time I call him, which is like almost every day. I'm like, I'm like, hey buddy, and he's like, hey buddy. We don't yeah. yell. I don't yell at Derek. I hug Derek. Yes. No, God, you but yell I am. When you come into Airbnbs. Y'all are gonna, y'all are gonna yell at me when it's D and D time, though, for sure. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have some fun with y'all, mother. As long as you're oh, a fair DM, if you play anything like you do in Mario Party, I have no fucking doubt. It's I'm worse. It. Remember, I'm not the player. I'm God. Oh, I know. I'm expecting it. I'm <laughs> expecting if you someone playing like a, an incredibly obnoxious NPC that's working. I've both got a couple. I've DM. got a couple. I'm I'm, I'm still I'm still working out the merchant because char- every D&D campaign has to have the motherfucking one merchant character that that like constantly reappears. Right. Anyway, that's a side yeah. note. Um, so I got one other thing uh, I wanted us to talk about tonight. We spent a lot of this year talking about how busy this year is how jam packed with game of the year contenders it's right a darn good year darn it's, good a, it's year. a damn good year um it's a it's a it's a anxiety year for gaming for sure it's so easy to talk once again about the number of of incredible games that just came out and incredible like big big triple a heavily marketed games that are looking to come out in the next 90 days 
Instead, what I'd like us to do, so I want us to focus a little smaller, right? I want us to focus on the indie games, the double A titles, um, and, and I want to ask us both, what are some of your favorite like indie and double A releases from this year? And also, what are your like most anticipated ones coming up? <laughs> I don't they know what I just did or said. <laughs> Britt, and I are, Britt and I are being fucking stupid in the Discord chat. Oh, no. Now I got to check on my phone because I can't do it on, <laughs> on the PC. For a minute, Britt, Britt had me. For, I, was like, I was like, no, Britt. Okay, wait. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> I thought Britt was going somewhere. That <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, that's the guy with a thousand two followers on Twitter. You better suck his dick. What? <laughs> and I said, I mean, he has more than I do. I mean, I have, no, 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 I have no, no. no ground to stand on to no, say no. No. But, but first, all Britt said was, I mean, and I was like, Britt, no, <laughs> like, <laughs> don't. But Folks, really I'm at I'm at I'm at sixteen twenty three, and I'm not going down as this site falls apart. So you know, I love that Finn if somebody wants just, to go for it, Finn is still just in the in the Discord chat, just playing Baldur's Gate. He's like, "What context am I?" <laughs> he was missing? like, "He was Mitch, like, I'm too busy to I'm too busy. I got this work call I gotta be on, and Finn, you know, I just we can don't see know." What you're doing, He's right, playing Finn? Baldur's Gate, right, Finn? You know, we can see. I love. Caitlin, I love. It could this. be Caitlyn because I know Caitlyn's playing. That's that's also possible, yeah. No, because Finn literally typed something in the Discord chat just now. He could be, well, on, he his could phone. be on his phone. Mm, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. <laughs> I don't buy it. Anyway, Derek, you were saying? Um, but yeah, so I want to talk about our favorite indie and double A titles that have come out because I think at this point, like indie and double A are approaching like a similar space, right? Where like I think whether it's from a big developer because who um. Sam brought up Hi-Fi Rush, right? No, Britt did. I did. And Sam was like, well, that's not indie. And I was like, well, it's it's not, but like, it's I think it occupies a similar a, space, right? Like, right? So a double A, definitely. I'll accept so a Sam, a Sam sure. found the correct, I need to do slash double A. But anyway, talk about our favorite Indian double A games of the year and what's coming up. Uh, and I want to, I want to maybe start with Britt, if you're, if you're ready. If not, I'll go to someone else and you can take some time not to think. Ready. Britt's eyes were like <laughs> dinner plates. For John, some let's go to you. No, no, it's fine. I got <laughs> okay. it. I got it. So I already played my indie of the year, and that um, was I can't remember the name because my brain fucking sucks. It's been uh, a hard year. I'm I'm gonna grant you that. I'll look it up in a minute, but I already had my favorite one. I got to play it earlier this year. Uh, a Space is... for the Unbound was Thank one you. you were real Thank into. Thank you. That's yeah. the one. I, I kept wanting to say Sea of Skies and Sea of Stars and just Sea of Stars shit. is one upcoming I'm very excited about. Yes. But um, so I am... I think I'm most anticipating, uh, like Dorian said, um, Stray Gods. Love Stray Gods. Excited for that shit. Um... And then the other one is Wrestle Quest. I'm really fucking Wrestle excited Quest. for that. Do really? we have a release yeah, window on that? Excited. Or Wrestle Quest? I'm not yeah. sure. I don't know if that's for sure coming, like, but uh, you know how a lot of these are. It's like when you've been seeing it in PAXs for a year or two straight, it's you know. I got no duties. Um, but yeah, Wrestle Quest is definitely one I'm super into. Uh, I didn't <laughs> think I would be, but I, there, I think there was a few more because I went like for mostly full indie picks on my um, games critic this year um, yeah. for my choices, just because I felt like those usually score pretty well and nobody fights over them. And it's worked out pretty well so far, but um, gaming over here <laughs> space for the unbound was really good. And there's so much, so many different aspects to the game, like gameplay wise, story wise and, um, just how it deals with depression and it's just it it's incredible and i recommend everybody play that game plus it has uh representation in there so that's always good to promote yeah uh sam why don't you tell us about some of your favorite indie and double a titles of the year okay so i got a couple um for indie specifically i have played a wonderful game called dredge has anyone here played yes dredge, dredge is, it. Mm. Dredge is that, okay so I, i'll be careful i almost a fishing game right uh, sure it, it is yes yes john it's a lovely relaxed vacation spot uh idyllic idyllic you know boston type 
Uh, no, okay, I'll, I'll I'll drop the predict. Um, <laughs> well, I don't want to spoil too much. It's a, Lovecraft it's a was uh, set in Massachusetts in most of his yeah, stories. So yeah, you know. this, yeah, yeah, the fishing hamlets and all that. Like it's you you get hired to be you know the new fishing guy you go out first couple days everything is fine and then you start noticing that "Hmm, there's some real weird fish around here coming out especially at night and then even during the day there will be like a tuna but it has a third eye somewhere like that's not literally a third eyeball or you know it's a horror fishing game it's i don't know how else to describe it yeah it's horror fishing it is a horror fishing like exploration game and it's so and good it, it's hard to say more about it without explaining more but like you start realizing there is something very wrong around this archipelago and the more you need more rewards you need uh you know better fish to sell for more money to upgrade your ship but well if you want the rarest fish you gotta stay out at night when you really really shouldn't because there's other things out there that, c- that come out during the night um dredge is fantastic it, it's been a big success so far i think it's available on everything Derek, correct me if I'm wrong uh, about that. Basically everything. I th- yeah, I thought I so. Like, yeah, so uh, play Dredge. Dredge is fantastic. And then uh, for AA, because I, I had a second one as well, um, since it was mentioned earlier and it does fit this description, High Five Rush is a gem. Hi- High oh Five Rush God. is an absolute gem. What a phenomenal, just fat W, for lack of a better word, uh, from Tango, which I love Tango. But they were very much filed away in this like, oh, they're the horror guys. They're that Japanese team at Bethesda that makes horror games like and they proved, you know, under the direction of John Johannes, a lovely guy, that that is not what they're going to be pigeonholed into. They can do mm-hmm. other stuff. Um, it is a rhythm action game, but it is very hand holding. There's a lot of accessibility options and just the way that world is synced to the beat of the music, it just gets in your bones. Also the just, music play with the license the soundtrack. Like, they, they have some bangers. They mm-hmm. have some incredible. The first boss is a nine inch nails beat drop. Yeah. And it just, and somehow <laughs> it's so somehow fucking good. It goes up from there. Oh somehow. my God. The, um, the second major boss. Um, so here's the thing. All right. A little bit of context. Sure, sure. I I am a huge fan of the Flaming Lips, right? I've loved the Flaming Lips since I was like middle school. Um, so is it like and a hot like hot sauce or what? What is that? No, it's a band. Um, I, I know it's a joke. Okay, there. I was I was gonna be mad. Um, and I actually like like one of my favorite songs of theirs that's kind of underappreciated is Free Radicals. Um, so getting to the second boss, this is not a super well-known song from a not unknown, but not like massive band. Um, and I'm hearing like the down out and I'm like, that sounds kind of like, but there's no fucking way. And it's really been dragged out down out. And I'm like, okay, well, hang on. And th- then it does the fucking like the I can't do it. I can't replicate it. But that riff. And I was like, I popped off so fucking hard for one of my favorite songs to make it on that soundtrack. Oh my God. So good. Oh yes. Just hi-fi rush is a gem. Y'all play that game. Yeah. Pl- play dredge and play hi-fi rush. That's what I've got. Yeah. John. So does it have to be indie games that came out this year? Yeah. I want to talk about the stuff that's been this year and coming up this year. I want to highlight, right. highlight really recent stuff. All right, so I haven't coming. played too many indie games this year, to be perfectly honest with you. So I'm going to cheat. Just You've been a little loaded bit. down with some huge ones, but I'm, I'm, with some I'm huge gonna, games in general. I'm I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I'm gonna cheat a little bit and say Chain Echoes for one, um, which if you love turn-based JRPGs from the Super Nintendo era and you haven't played Chain Echoes, you're really really missing out on something truly special. Um, uh, I'm really looking forward to Sea of Stars. Um. I would love to say that one of my indie, favorite indie games this year was uh, Silk Song, but that game is doesn't exist, so it's, it's never, never coming, coming out. out. It's not it's, real. It, that game is not real, and I'm actually starting to think that it's fucking vaporware. So, how many how many years now has Silk Song has it been since Silk Song was announced? What's that? Five. Like it's been a long fucking time. They did actually show an update last year that they hadn't for a long time. They they did show new gameplay and all but, that. So. But like, when was the game announced? Oh. When was it announced? I for some reason, like, twenty uh, seventeen is in my head. But that, I'm yeah, look that's what it I'm up. thinking. 
That's what I'm thinking. It too. was announced on uh, February 14, 2019, as a sequel to the. Oh, that's a lot more recent than I thought. Okay, yeah. so four years. Four that's years. not the end of the no, world. No, that that feels longer than games get five, I, six year dev cycles. These COVID days. really did something to us. Twenty twenty is eight years long. I, that's I got true. one for you that I think Derek will appreciate. All right, I'm really looking forward to Metal Slug Tactics. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, like God fucking, damn yes. Like, like Metal Slug one, Tactics is going to revolutionize my world. Like one, if you've if never it comes out Metal this Slug year. games and you love beautiful, beautifully animated pixel art games and side scroll and shoot 'em ups, you need to play Metal Slug. Now imagine that in a fucking tactics game. You know like I'm I a am, fucking absolute whore for tactics games. I love so. tactics games and I love I will Metal debase Slug. myself for a good dude, tactics game. Dude, and, and dude, Metal Slug is one of the greatest shmups of all fucking time. So you put those two, two things together and I am very, very excited for Metal Slug Tactics. Does that have a release date? No, we have no clue. It does not. Okay. Um, another one, and I've played this on PC and I'm very much looking forward to it on Switch is uh, World of Horror. Yeah, that's uh, going 1.0 soon, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and World of Horror is a one-bit um horror rpg uh made by one guy set in japan and it's basically uh, it's basically uzumaki right like it's ba it's based off the works of junji it's very ito. junji ito inspired yeah um it's it's set in japan uh it is absolutely phenomenal derek this is 100 percent derek core shit right yeah here. i know i got my um, ass fucking handed to me <laughs> pax one year and the the dev was like chatting with Finn watching me and he just went, your buddy's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> like world of horror. If you are like, like I'm like, I'm a Junji Ito convert. Like I picked up. Yeah, Uzumaki. I finally got you. I bought yeah. you Uzumaki Der and you're hard. Derek got me Uzumaki now. and I read the whole, I went through the whole fucking thing. I'm excited. I'm super excited about the fucking cartoon, um, the animated series. But um, if you love Junji Ito, if you love Uzumaki, um, absolute world of horror absolutely needs to be on your radar 100 phenomenal shit and he made the whole game in microsoft paint it's holy fucking shit crazy wow it's he made all the, the visuals in microsoft paint yeah to be clear yeah all the visuals were made in microsoft paint it's it's a one-bit game and it oozes fucking atmosphere like yeah. it is a, an absolutely incredible experience and i feel like it's an experience that is best suited for the um for a handheld device on the couch or in bed in the dark with some headphones and speaking of that the last one i'll say is be, uh, because it came out i want to say early this year on switch uh is um lone survivor oh yeah yeah that's lone a survivor. favorite of yours lone survivor is a fantastic basically imagine silent hill on the super nintendo and you've got Lone Survivor. I streamed it, and Britt actually l watched my stream, and she was like, "Holy shit, I'm digging the fucking like the music here. Like, like the music is very, very Silent Hill. It's very like lo-fi. You can actually chill to a lot of the music in this game. Um, but it's also an it's utterly terrifying fucking 2D experience. Like, uh, uh, Lone Survivor is a just a scary fucking game. It's also a great fucking game. Again, made by one guy, Jasper Byrne. Uh, who is a uh, a big Silent Hill fan? You can see those influences all over Lone Survivor. Um, I'm trying to think of other indie games I have played this year. The thing is, like Derek said, there have been so many big games, like Final Fantasy 16, and you know, not Baldur's Gate, and all the Final Fantasy 14 stuff, and like you know, there, there's just been so many so many big releases this year that it's been hard like i've unfortunately i feel like some of the great indie games have been lost in the shuffle a little bit um but uh, uh, looking to the future i'm most excited about uh metal slug tactics i keep wanting to say metal gear tactics i'm most excited about metal slug tactics and uh sea of, sea of stars yeah um, um can i put out one that's coming up with an asterisk mark on it sure yes. So I forgot about this, but I was actually just browsing on my phone to, trying to see if there was something I'd forgotten. Uh, Hades 2 is supposed to hit early access this year. Now, oh, really? we, we will I never see played the first one. What the fuck, John? John. Well, to be fair, he's straight, so. 
<laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> Sam's like, uh, so am I. <laughs> Sorry, it's just the game caught on very heavy with the gays. But yeah, like, no, no, he's genuinely one of the best action roguelikes no, it's in fantastic. ages. You should it, it's play It's fantastic. It. And I'm, I'm not a roguelike fan. And that was that was a phenomenal game. When it, when it hit consoles last year, I was obsessed. I couldn't put it down. Uh, so yeah, Asterisk Mark is it's just early access. We'll see if it makes that because we haven't heard anything. But Hades 2, I cannot wait to see what Supergiant is going to do with that to, to yeah. figure out like because the, the first one was already perfect basically for, for, well there's there's actually an indie game that is on my radar and i have not yet played i'm waiting for it to come to switch but it is one of the most critically acclaimed games of the year and that is dave the diver um yeah i've i've heard so much crazy shit about dave the diver and i need to check it out honestly it is a uh, it, it is it, like it that game is a sensation and uh it is and i have People have been raving, and I do mean raving, about Dave the Diver. Um, another one I, I need to get around to is uh, Warhammer 40k Bolt Gun, which is an indie game. Oh, um, oh it's so good. I, I'm embarrassed I didn't remember that. Bolt Gun is excellent. But yeah, that was one I was going to bring up as one of my favorites so far. It was Dare very talk fucking about good. It, please. Oh, it's just, I mean, like, what is there to say? It's a Warhammer 40k boomer shooter that looks incredible and plays incredible and has a dedicated bunt to make Rahul Kohli talk shit. So no. like he has a lot of taunts. He has he so many voice lines. It's easily. insane. They really just recorded a couple hours of this man talking the most shit against the enemies of the of the the Empire of Man. And um there you go. But no, it's it's good, but it's like it's very straightforward. You know exactly what the fuck you're getting with yep. it. Also, um, it is a the canonical sequel to Warhammer 40k Space Marine. It which takes is place insane to after me. Space Marine, and it takes place before Space Marine 2. So that's yeah. funny. Now, um, I got I'm a few. Oh, you oh, go ahead. Derek, can I mention one game that yeah, I think absolutely. that that will be a segue into what I think you no, want to talk how dare about? You. Yeah, go and ahead. And it's a game that has not had near the playtime or like the audience or the recognition it deserved. And it's a game that is made for Switch, and it needs to come to Switch, and that is Papers, Please. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, fact Papers, that, Please. Basically, if you haven't played Papers, Please, like you need to play yourself. Papers, Please. Yeah, Fix yourself. You're not going to do well at it, but that's not the point. Like, play it. Just do. It's like it's good like papers, please. Like I know it's not a game that we that is coming to and right now. It's not coming to anything because it's been out for a long time. But paper, I wanted to bring up papers, please, because if I can think of a game in, in, that deserves a second chance at life, it's fucking papers, please. Derek, go ahead. Uh, I have a, I have a few. It's a puppy. Um, I have it's a few. Need a baby. So um, one that I'm excited for is uh, Ghost Runner Two should be hitting late this year if I remember correctly. Uh, really? and yeah, and Ghost Runner was was good as hell. Uh some of you may remember that Ghost Runner actually um <laughs> their Steam page has the Saki Award from SDGC on it. Uh oh, that's right, it does. Right. Which is funny because they I we did not give them our graphics, so they had to they had to 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 rip it or recreate it. Not that that's a hard thing to do. Um, but just like how funny, but Ghost Rider was super fun. Uh, it was right in me and Justin's wheelhouse and I'm super excited for Ghost Runner 2. Um, you know, if you didn't play the first one, like you should, it's usually on sale. It's on like every platform, I think, but this is this really cool first person, like hyper kinetic action game, you know, with like parkour and sword play and like, you know, you're kind of, it appeals to the speed runner, uh, you know, or, or the like wannabe speed runner uh you know energy so uh yeah i just that looks really good um i'm curious i believe my time at sandrock which is the follow-up to my time at porsche went early access um last year and i think it's going 1.0 later this year um and i'm always curious to see like people joke about all of the like farming and life simulator type games but when one stands out and really catches an audience, like I think that's something meaningful to stand out in a sea of, of indie, you know, farming life simulator type games. Um, and I'm real curious about how my time at Sandrock shakes out once it goes 1.0, gets a bunch of reviews, etc. cetera. Um, you all have taken a bunch of ones. I was going to bring up like dredge and sea of stars um sorry it's okay no that's good that means that people are thinking about these games and they should be 
Um, I saw a great, a great, um, you I'm know, a backer of Sea of Stars, so that was yeah. that was a given for There's me. a me great too. post. There's a great post about um, you know, like it's so, you know, fucking sorry to um Starfield for having to come out after Baldur's Gate three and be like compared against it unfairly in reviews. And then uh Sea of Stars like quote tweeted that with the like nervous monkey uh picture. And it was just it was very funny because it was like, yeah, poor Sea of Stars, this this almost certainly not not prejudging here but almost certainly going to be like a wonderful little experience Mm -hmm. is is really dropping at a rough time uh in terms of bigger rpgs around it but i get the feeling it's going to hold its own regardless um i'm excited uh about goodbye volcano high that's now less than two weeks away i forgot all about that oh that fine oh yeah that finally has a release date holy shit i'm really really curious i i have been since early on i like the the vibe that it's going for um i'm all about like look man if you can give me like a good there's still a part of me that loves like the good pathos filled teen drama and but this also looks like it's trying to be something like much more emotionally heavy than it you know it even seems from its like first presentation um, and again, like I got to respect the team for being willing to clean house when like somebody on the narrative team was, was found, you know, and reminded to be like a shitty person. They like, they handled that. And I, I appreciate that. I wish more studios big and small would be like, Hey, maybe there's somebody on the team that is not good for the subject matter we're handling. Um, the last one I want to shout out, uh, this is, this is more in the double A space and the indie space. Uh, I did mention that I am just a dirty, like, filthy whore for tactics games. Oh, don't uh, call yourself that, even though it's I, true. Dude, you don't understand. I... I know you are. Yeah. I know you are. So... <laughs> but, um... You're playing Aliens, Baldur's Gate, we know. Yeah, Aliens Dark Descent uh, dropped right. back in June. And I think it was really overlooked by a lot of folks. But it is an Aliens, like you know, Xenomorphs, like the famous like alien horror franchise, um, tactics like XCOM like RPG. And it's real fucking good. It's real good. It's real creative. The, the energy and the vibe and the atmosphere of like the second movie in particular are really well kept. Um, you know, I think, uh, to me, like in the same way that Alien Isolation was an almost perfect game to recreate what the original Alien film was going for, I think Alien's Dark Descent is maybe my favorite game I've played, like Alien's game that captures like this is what we're going for with the More second. More so movie. than Alien I- Isolation. Yeah, well, you got to remember the second movie was uh, was a very different film. Right. No, yes. We're talking about aliens here. That's yeah. specifically for this aliens. Is, yeah. Alien isolation. I, I don't know how you do better, right? In terms of capturing that, like the original film and its horror aesthetic. But like Dark Descent is that perfect blend of like mili- like sci-fi military horror, right? That that works really fucking well. Um, and I just more people should look into it and more people should play it. Uh, we've been going through like a tactics game renaissance and I've been eating so fucking good y'all. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what I got. I think I don't know of much else that's hitting cause we've been through, like I'm looking through lists to like, see what I've missed. And there's, there's some stuff on there. I know other people are excited. Like I know a lot, a lot of people are excited about Gloomhaven. I just don't, I just don't know. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I don't want to pretend to be excited about things. I haven't, paid a lot of attention to the yeah, other so main one i was I'm excited right for got uh sorry go ahead john no i was just gonna say, no i was just agreeing with Derek. that's all okay. i was gonna say the other big one i was excited for got delayed out of this year which is uh frost punk 2 like, oh am, yeah I yeah i got a good extremely... friend who's super into frost punk i never tried it though frost punk so. is great i and i don't like city builders but frost frost punk is fantastic i can be into a city builder it really depends right <laughs> I mean, that's the thing that I thought was kind of interesting about, you know, I brought up my time at Sandrock, right? Mm -hmm. My time at Porsche, it's the city builder stuff mixed in that I thought made that interesting in the first place. So, yeah. Uh, And I think that brings us right to our... uh, Well, we are right at the end, dude. Look at that. I did so good. Perfect. You know what's cool about this is I can now go play more Baldur's Gate 3. 
because we are I can finally get the good. fuck out of here I can, <laughs> like, I, 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 i'm not gonna lie to you like i'm gonna be totally honest with you guys i love you all i've been thinking about nothing but uh Baldur's gate 3 the entire time like this game has it has its hooks into me like nothing has in years like holy fucking shit good it's game. good John keeps John. John actually has the Discord window like not full screened. He's got Baldur's Gate running behind it, and it's and, and it's like Discord's only taking up like seventy five percent of the screen. I wish that. I, and if I he looks in the corner, if he that, looks on that right stripe of the screen that's available wish, for Baldur's Gate, you can just see Lazel fucking twerking in the corner. The like, case, pay attention to I'm me. Carlac <laughs> deserves all my attention. <laughs> she deserves all of it. She deserves the um, world. So we're we're gonna go ahead and sign off here, Derek. We're doing a fundraising stream on Sunday. On Sunday, um, we're gonna do. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, I don't know. We haven't been getting a lot of a lot of donations for uh for the the strikes. And to be fair, some very wealthy Hollywood like types have dumped a ton of money into those funds. So, so like, do they really need it? I don't know how bad the need is. So like, I might switch us over to raising money for like wildfire relief in Hawaii. Also, um, dude, it, 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 but here's the thing: it would just be fun to have a stupid Mortal Kombat stream. So right, like it is ultimately this is an excuse to do stupid Mortal Kombat stream and yeah. show John like the ridiculousness that is Mortal Kombat story. But also, like we're gonna raise some money for a good cause. See if we can get fifty bucks. You know who knows. So, um, but yeah, so that's gonna be Sunday. I think at eleven a.m. Um, yeah, I'm all about yeah. it. And we'll be doing the back half of um, Mortal Kombat Nine story mode. John's gonna John's gonna meet Sindel. It'll be a moment. Oh boy! I mean, yeah. I'm I'm still all about Sindel, but Carlac has my heart now, man. Right? Look, John. Right. Here's the thing, dude. This is fucking rookie stuff. You got it. You you can have one waifu or husbando per like media thing. You know what I mean? And actually, you're allowed to have multiple. Like that's the crazy thing. So there's no mm-hmm. law. There is no know, limit man. on thirst in yeah. Fandom. You know how many real people I'm thirsty for, and you're gonna tell me to be limited about the fictional ones? No. <laughs> not how this works <laughs> all right well we'll go ahead and uh, we will go ahead and end it here uh i we of course greatly appreciate everyone uh, uh as always who came out to hang out with us um do yourselves a favor go pick up baldur's gate 3 and play it that's what i'm gonna do as soon as we're done here uh tune in here uh it again Sessions. wow dude i love this buy it again on playstation buy it again I'm, I'm like i'm not gonna double tap this shit um, <laughs> triple I, I, I'll buy it wherever it goes. That's fine. Yeah. yeah, it's like Re- yeah, it's like Resident Evil Four. It doesn't matter what platform. John's over on, here going to DP Baldur's Gate Three. Got it. I'm going to DP the shit out of Baldur's Gate Three. Like I'm going to get all up in there. Just Double purchase all the way to the base. Like you just got to. You just sometimes you just got to do it. Um, gotta, that's the, that's the thrust of the situation, it. you know. Um, but I'm going to. Derek is so sorry for all of this. Oh uh, uh, no, I'm not. Well, We'll be here at 11 uh, right here on Twitch TV slash uh, twitch.tv slash official SDGC. Uh, Take care of each other and remember the kindness costs nothing. We'll see you later. Take care, y'all.